How you guys doing tonight? That was actually way better than most crowds give me when I come out here. Uh, give me a second. I've been doing this for like nine months. I still haven't figured out what the fuck to do with a uh, mic stand, apparently. <laughs> Fail with it. Like, that's... That's... Dance... No, it's done. It's over. It's... I might want it back! I might want it back, okay? It could be a prop. See? I could hide behind it if it's going badly. I want options. Don't take this away from me. I can still see you when you're behind it. Shut up. I'll go behind it and close your eyes. How about that? <laughs> Deal? Okay. So I, I guess I could just do this thing, but then I realized my pockets are like way smaller than uh, Russ's, and that looks kind of sad. Aww. Yeah. Nobody wants... To, I don't want to rep this. No, this is, this is horrible. So how are you guys doing tonight? Seriously, how are you doing? Come on. Okay. Uh, guys, I like to start my sets talking about something that I feel is uh, very important. Uh, guys, I'm going to talk about myself a little bit. <laughs> I thought it was important. No, I do. Uh, I'm going to talk about myself a little bit. Uh, I actually just turned 29, which, no, that's just time, guys. That's just how time works. I mean, it's kind of impressive. I drink a lot. I'm clumsy, so 29 is kind of an accomplishment, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, no, like, I don't know. 29 is weird. I'm not going to say that 29 is old, because it's not old, but it is weird. Uh, like, you guys know what comes after 29, right? No! I heard 30. You're wrong. What comes after 29 is lying about your age. I didn't even hear you, but I don't care. <laughs> no, seriously, though. Uh, 29, lying about your age. That's how it works. This is show business, guys. I get to do that. Uh, I'll be 30 around the time I'm like 43. Uh, I'll be dead before I'm 40. It's great. It's a good system. But uh, I want you to do me a favor. You guys, we want you to uh, listen to me here. It's important. Uh, if you ever see me in 2015 and I take the stage and I go, hey, guys, life sure gets weird when you turn 26. <laughs> Just go with it. Don't say anything. Don't challenge me after the show. Snitches get stitches, guys. <laughs> Snitches get stitches. That's the rule. Uh, I have a day job. I work in a warehouse, which is uh, funny because that's not why I went to college. <laughs> that's not why. Uh, I got a lot of student loans. It's not that funny. Aww. Oh, yeah, shut up. <laughs> no, I do. I work in a warehouse. It's not that exciting. We did have a little adventure the other day because we had a uh, bird, like, fly into the building. I didn't think it was that big of a deal until I heard somebody say the words, Hey, look, that bird is trapped in the warehouse. Oh, he's trapped in the warehouse? <laughs> That's funny because so am I. Yeah, uh, that bird's been here for like a day. I've been trapped for four years. Yeah, I looked up and I had a hunch. I looked up, sure enough, there's a nest. That means the bird's working from home, you guys. Yeah. I have to commute half an hour. How is that fair? Uh, it's painful. Like the worst part is when I heard somebody like, like somebody pointed at the window. There's another bird outside. They're like, look, the bird's trying to get back to his bird friend outside the building. I was like, awesome. He's got someone waiting for him outside the building. Oh. <laughs> Guys, you know what's waiting for me outside the building? Traffic. Netflix and whiskey. I don't, I don't want to talk about the bird anymore, okay? God, you are guys, <laughs> like the nicest audience. I sound way funnier than I actually am. This is great. <laughs> I love it. I'm not complaining. No, I am 29, which I'm 29. I'm still single. Um, I don't know. Like, I feel kind of bad about that. It's like... I don't know, I just figured at 29, you know, I would already be uh, divorced, right? You just expect certain things at a certain age. Like, I figured by 29, I'd already have that special someone who hates me and, like, took half my stuff, right? You expect certain things. Like, it's crazy to think about. Like, I'm old enough to have kids at this point, you guys. I don't have any kids. I'm old enough to have kids. I could have kids, uh, and I could see those kids, like, every other weekend. It's unbelievable, you know? <laughs> I could be one-seventh of a father. I could be one-seventh. It's kind of magical. I don't know, the weirdest thing... I didn't think 29 and single was that weird until I realized... Uh, my grandmother thinks I'm gay now. Like, that's happened. No, that really has happened. Uh, I figured that out, like, last Thanksgiving when she came up to me and said, Hey, what's your favorite Matthew McConaughey movie where he takes his shirt off? <laughs> yeah. And the bad part is it's Magic Mike. I can't tell her that. It's just fuel for the fire. It's fuel for the fire. 
And like, it's not a huge deal. Like, I don't, like, I'm not mad that my grandmother thinks I'm gay. Like, none of her friends are hot. I don't care, you know? <laughs> the thing is, like, I'm kind of shocked. Like, honestly, like, it kind of blows me away. Like, I could not believe that my grandmother would even be okay with the idea of a gay grandson. Like, uh, you guys don't understand. When my grandfather came out, she was pissed. <laughs> was furious. It's kind of unbelievable. I'm gonna go ahead and launch into something a little bit controversial, but you guys seem cool. I think we're friends, so I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Uh, are you guys familiar with Tom's shoes? Yeah. Yeah, a few of you, good enough. Uh, I'm not a fan, not a fan of Tom's shoes. For those of you who don't know, uh, Tom's shoes, you buy a pair of Tom's shoes, they will give a pair of shoes to a needy child in a third world country. Not that impressive, okay? Check it out. Buy a pair of Nikes, guys. If you buy a pair of Nikes, they will give a kid in a third world country a job. That's capitalism. That's way better than shoes. It's the bedrock of America. Thank you, Nike. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm a complicated guy. I've realized that. Like, I've discovered... I don't know if this is, like, a me thing or if this is an everybody thing, but I've noticed that there are things that I'm against. There are things that I'm against that I'm opposed to. And then there's the shit that actually just makes me mad. Like, I don't know if that's a normal thing or if that's uh, just a me thing. Uh, for instance, I'm opposed to people who say, hey, this is America, you should speak American. That's such an ugly, xenophobic attitude, you guys. That's not cool. You know what makes me mad? When a fucking ginger tries to tell me where to find authentic Mexican food. <laughs> yeah. If I want authentic Mexican food, I'm not asking the translucent guy. Shove it, Seamus. <laughs> It's not cool. Um, it, makes me, it makes me mad. It does. Uh, another thing that I'm against is uh, the way that we are just addicted to cell phones. Like, can you remember the last time you went to lunch with somebody and you didn't look at them just doing this the whole time? Like, have you had a conversation with somebody who wasn't like this the whole time in years? Probably not. You know what makes me mad? When restaurants won't post their Wi-Fi passwords, right? <laughs> I shouldn't have to ask. It's so uncomfortable. The waitress comes up and says, what do you want? Internet! Internet! There's <laughs> one more of these. Uh, there's a lot more, but there's one more for the show. Uh, this is serious, you guys. I'm against cruelty to animals. Yeah! Yeah, easy positions. You know what else sucks? Hunger. Yeah. You know what I hate? Injustice. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. No, but cruelty to animals, it sucks. It's unbelievable. You know what makes me mad? when somebody overcooks my steak. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like, there's a difference between rare and medium rare. Get it, get it right, you oh, glorified fry cook. Oh, I'm mad. I'm just mad, sorry. <laughs> it's just, you ask, they ask, what's the point of asking if they're gonna get it wrong? But don't be cruel to animals, you guys. Don't do it. Not cool. I don't know. There is some weird shit that we do to animals that I'm not okay with. Like, poaching is unbelievable. Uh, we're almost out of rhinos now because people think rhino horn is an aphrodisiac. I don't know how that got started. That's just, like, I know rhino horns are kind of dick-shaped, but you know what else is dick-shaped? Like, almost everything. <laughs> like, buildings, trees, rhino dicks are a little bit more dick-like than the horns. I probably should have asked if this was a clean show before I got up here. Nobody's pulled me off stage, it's good enough. I don't know, like I feel like the rhino horn thing was just like a rumor started by elephants so people would like stop fucking with their tusks. <laughs> like shit, where is everybody? We gotta do something about this. <laughs> I don't know, like here's the weirdest one that I found out about. Uh, apparently in Japan, there's like this underground thing where they will like ground up turtle penis as an aphrodisiac. Isn't that weird? Like it's weird, like I don't know, like I'm not condoning any of it, but if you're gonna go after any animal, like lion dick, right? <laughs> like even if it doesn't work, you just have the story, you know? <laughs> but they use turtle penis and it's weird. Like the only advantage to turtle penis I can think of is that you can take a turtle's dick and he won't realize it for like nine months because they're slow, right? <laughs> yeah. Like you'll take a turtle's dick in January, like next October, he'll be with his turtle girlfriend and be like, Oh, yeah, baby. I'm gonna make you... What happened? 
I try to work a talking animal into uh, every one of my talking animal into every one of my sets. Animals can talk in my jokes. I can't. Go figure. <laughs> no, I do. I like talking animals. I love the idea of it. I uh, when I was a kid, I wanted a talking dog. Like I was obsessed with the idea. A little bit older, a little bit wiser, I can see how it would be uh, problematic. Cause it's just one more person to get mad at me when I do something stupid. You know. No, just like imagine you're hanging out with your talking dog and it's cool. You're watching TV. Uh, you're like, oh, God, the Rangers lost again. Those bitches. And your dog's like, hey, that is our word. And you're like, shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, dude. I thought I had B word privileges. I don't know. Uh, I haven't been to church in a few years. Uh, I'm not too worried about it, though, because check it out. Uh, every time I sneeze, somebody blesses me. I think I'm good. Yeah. I know, I actually told that joke to a uh, Christian friend of mine. He's like, I don't think it works that way. I'm like, dude, I don't think it works at all, so. <laughs> Agree to disagree. I know this is Plano, but I told that joke anyway. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to go ahead and leave you with this. Uh, I don't like hanging out with other dudes. I'm just going to put it out there. I'm not a fan. No, there's always, like, I always get mad at my dude friends because they do something stupid. Uh, the other night I went out with some buddies. I wore a pink shirt. I don't care. I don't think it's a big deal. But, of course, somebody just looks at it and goes, hey, man, hand over your man card. And I'm like, dude, hand over your adult card, okay? Come on. No, we say the stupidest things. I got one guy who's just like, ah, women are ridiculous. I just want to go gay, so I don't have to put up with women anymore. It's like, dude, you get involved with a guy, there's like an 8,000% bigger chance you're going to get Dutch oven. I'm just going to tell you that right now. <laughs> like, be careful. No, we say, like, especially with women, we say the dumbest things. I hear guys complaining. It's like, I don't know why girls don't like me. Dude, change out of your sweatpants before you make this argument. <laughs> the worst, the worst is the nice guys. And I'm going to go ahead and leave you with this. Nice guys drive me up the wall. I don't understand. Like, it's like, uh, girls don't like me because I'm too nice. That's not a thing. See, saying girls don't like you because you're too nice is like me saying I can't get a bank loan because I'm too handsome, you know? <laughs> That's actually the one time I don't want people to laugh at one of my jokes. I just kind of like to imagine an audience. Like, it'd be nice if an audience was just like, yeah, he's too good looking for a bank loan. You can't trust money with a hunk like that. <laughs> you can't do it. But, you know, I'll, I'll take the laughter, whatever. I don't know, like, it drives me up the wall. Why do guys think women care if we're nice? We don't care if they're nice, do we? <laughs> have you ever been hanging out with a guy and having to be like, check out that girl over there, man. You see the manners on her? Damn! <laughs> never. You never like walk past a construction site and see a construction worker going, hey, baby, I like the way you held that door open. <laughs> never. Never happens. Like, I'll believe that nice matters when I go to a strip club and hear the announcer talking about how they've got the kindest girls in town, you know? Just be like, coming up on the main stage, Tiff Amberley puts her ankles behind her ears because she's bending over backwards to help her friends. Oh! <laughs> All right, guys, I'm Alex Gaskin. That's my time. Thank you.